In this video, we're going to look at the best possible low light GoPro settings to make your footage look as cinematic and epic as possible. John Wick styles, here we come. Now we all know that low light GoPro footage sucks due to the tiny little sensor that can't handle the darkness. That's why for this video, I took YouTube's top six videos on the topic Charted out their individual settings and rode around Sydney Airport like 20 times with a range of lighting conditions and recorded the results. Basically, I've done all the hard work for you. All you need to do is decide on which settings you like the most. I'll also be sharing the settings that I've used previously at the end of the video. Now before we jump right into this, we need to clarify just a few things. I'm using the Hero 7, but the settings can be used across all heroes. I'll be making a dedicated Hero 10 version soon to see if the low light quality has improved. Keep auto low light off we want as much manual control as possible. ProRes should always be on. Every YouTuber suggests not exceeding ISO max 1600 as the footage becomes unbearably grainy. HyperSmooth doesn't work too well in low light due to there not being enough light or information in each frame for the processor to do its thing. So don't freak out if your footage is a little more shaky than usual. Super View is always set to on, unless of course you don't want your hands in the frame. If you're going to edit the video later, set sharpness to low with GoPro color to flat, then sharpen and grade in post accordingly. I'll be releasing a full tutorial on how to do this in the near future along with the launch of my GoPro LUTs pack, baby. It's gonna be sick. If you're not gonna be doing any editing and you're gonna be using the footage right off the GoPro, then set sharpness to medium and the color to GoPro color. High sharpness doesn't really look that good, it doesn't look cinematic or professional, but if that's the look you're going for, then go for it. The footage you're seeing in this video was shot in GoPro flat with the sharpness set to low. I then applied a teeny bit of contrast in post, which you can see here. This is the before and this is the after. Sick, let's get into it. As a base comparison, the footage you're seeing right now is from the auto setting. We're letting the GoPro control everything here and I guess the footage isn't too bad. A few things you'll notice that the footage is blurry due to slow shutter speeds. Slower shutter speeds mean more light can hit the sensor, which is great, but it makes for a blurry image, which isn't so great. The exposure levels change with different lighting conditions, which doesn't look that cinematic or professional. We're after a nice consistent exposure across the board. The same goes for white balance, which alters its color. We want control over that. And the quality of the image gets crushed by the boost in ISO, which we all know increases the sensitivity of light to the sensor, which makes the footage brighter, which is great, but at the cost of producing grainy, noisy footage, which isn't so great. These next settings are recommended by YouTube channel Pascal Basil. 24 frames a second with a shutter speed of 1 48th of a second allows as much light to hit the sensor while maintaining the correct amount of motion blur by doubling the shutter speed in comparison to the frame rate. Sorry if that sounded a bit confusing. Watch this next video if you'd like more info on motion blur. He has white balance set to auto, which is totally fine. I still prefer dialing in a set figure to minimize color shifting. He has ISO max set to 800 to keep the grain or noise level down to a minimum however, resulting in a darker or underexposed shot. Now let's look at the same settings, but with the ISO dialed in at max 1600. These settings are recommended by YouTube channel Mount Media. You can see the difference in brightness now at the expense of introducing more noise into the footage. We're on the chest mount GoPro here, that's why it's looking a little bit lower, but you can see that everything's nice and bright. Everything's a bit brighter through the airport, it looks sick. You can see straight away, as soon as we start cruising down, it gets a little bit darker. You can see all the grain around the lights there going down that straight. The tunnel looks awesome. The tunnels always look sick. In this dark section, you're gonna see all the grain and it looks pretty bad. Which do you prefer? A bright shot but with more noise or a darker shot with less noise? Now let's take the same settings but set the white balance to 3200 Kelvin. These settings are recommended by David Manning. You will notice that the temperature of the footage has turned a nice blue. We're getting into the full John Wick cyberpunk territory here, which I absolutely dig. It almost looks like I'm in Tokyo or I'm playing Need for Speed 2 or something. It just takes you to a different sort of place. So we got more control over the white balance there. You notice that there were no color shifts at all. You just set in at 3200 Kelvin. That's all it's gonna be the whole time. Let's bring up the white balance to 4000 Kelvin. These settings are recommended by Riha Alev. Now you can see that the temperature has warmed up right across the board, giving a more neutral tone. The higher the temperature, the warmer the image. The lower the temperature, the cooler the image. The ISO has dropped down to 800, which he recommends. And it is a lot smoother during the low light sections. You don't get so much grain or noise happening around all these little light pops. 
And now for the preset that I have used previously in my nighttime motor vlogging vids. Now I bumped mine up to 30 frames per second at 1 60th of a second. For me, I enjoy the look and feel of 30 frames per second, but doing this means that you have to increase the shutter speed to 1 60th of a second, meaning that there's less light that hits the sensor, which results in making the image darker. Now after making this video, I didn't really realize there's not much of a difference between 24 frames a second and 30 frames a second due to the image stability not working that well. So I think from here on in, I might even now consider going back to 24 frames a second knowing what I've learned. White balance is set at 3200 Kelvin. I really dig the blue John Wick cinematic effect. And I have ISO set to 1600. I do like a brighter image and I can always denoise it in post if I need to. Whenever I'm out riding at night though, I do make sure that I'm riding in a well lit area. If you're riding down some dark alley streets or through some old country town roads that are just pitch black, obviously you're not going to have a good image because it's just damn too dark. So for best results, ride where there's a lot of light. Try to stick to the roads that have as much light as possible. Tunnels, airports, just keep doing loops like what I did. So which settings do you prefer or do you think you'll use? Or do you think the footage still looks horrible and that GoPro needs to get their act together? I'm really keen to see how the Hero 10 will compare, but until then, let me know what you think in the comments below and watch this video right here if you'd like some dope settings for motor vlogging during the day. Peace!